Hi there, folks. Today we're going to look at these uh, statistical measurements, but we're going to look at them from the perspective of uh, um, doing them on a, a graphing calculator or using something like Desmos. So we're going to let the, the computers kind of take over and do these things for us. We'll look at all of the statistical measures that we've talked about, um, mean, median, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, we'll even see like the, the quartiles for back from uh, Algebra 1 and that kind of stuff. We're kind of going to focus on this variance and standard deviation, though. Okay? And so again, when you look at variance and standard deviation, we're measuring how spread out the data is. And this, where again, we're looking at the sample. Uh, when we're looking at a sample of data, these are the formulas used. If we want the entire population, I remember the entire population uh, formula, we essentially just get rid of this guy. Okay? And uh, I, I mentioned that again only to, to point out that we'll see both of these on the calculator. And uh, when we see them on the calculator versus something like Desmos, uh, when we see them on a, a graphing calculator, uh, the one labeled as sigma will be for population. The one that we actually want, the sample, will be labeled in a different way. All right, And so it's important to understand that there are two versions of this thing that the calculator is going to present to us. We want the one for samples because we're typically dealing with a sample set of data, not the entire population. Okay, And so we just have to understand the difference between these when we start plugging these things into the, the, the calculators and to the computer and that kind of stuff. All right, Know that there's two different versions. Know which version that we're looking for here. Okay. Uh, so taking a look at this example, uh, and we already did this one uh, by hand, finding the, the mean, median, and mode. Now we're going to find the variance and standard deviation. We're not going to do it by hand, so instead of plugging this into those formulas, really the, plugging into the formula is just a, kind of a tedious task that everyone should be able to do, plug in values in. I'm going to show you how to do this on the, the calculator. So here we're going to look at the, uh, the Casio graphing calculator here. And so what we do, we hit the menu button. We're going to go to menu, over to uh, stat, the statistics menu. And uh, if you already have uh, values punched in here, uh, you just have to kind of go through and delete them. So go to the, the very top one and just start hitting the, this uh, delete button uh, down here uh, until they're all removed. Okay, So that's how you clear out your list. And, and I'm just going to punch in each of these values into list one. So here I go. Uh, so I've got all those punched in. Now what I want to do is I want to calculate some values. So right here, F2 is associated with calculate. And uh, what I want to calculate, uh, it's called one variable statistics. And it's one variable because we're literally only looking at one thing. We're only looking at bowling scores here. If we were looking at two variables like X and Y, uh, then we could do something like two variable statistics. So right here, one variable statistics. And it'll automatically use a list one for this. Uh, and so now when I look at this thing, it gives me more than just the variance standard deviation. It gives me a whole lot of information here. The very first thing that's listed right here, X with the bar over, that's our mean. So the mean is 122, so I could copy that guy down. Um, and now I kind of go through this list. Uh, this uh, next one, that's a uppercase sigma. Uh, so uppercase sigma there, uh, that is the uh, the symbol for the sum. So that's the sum of all the data values, so 976. The next one is the sum of all the data values squared. And now right here, you see this sigma and then uh, with the n and then sigma with the n minus 1. Though that is our standard deviation. This top one, if you think back to that formula, is for population. And this second one is that the one that we're using right now, and that's for, for uh, a sample. Okay, and so when we're looking at a sample, we're going to use this guy. It's the 29.11. And this is a lowercase sigma. It's like a little uh, uh, zero with a hat on it. Uh, but 29.11, that is the standard deviation. The thing that's not given here, as we kind of go back through, there's more stuff in this list. And as we scroll down, the thing that's not given is the variance. Okay, so the variance is not on this list, but think about the formulas. Normally, if I do this by hand, uh, I would find the variance and then take the square root to get the standard deviation. So if I have the standard deviation, I just have to square it to get the variance. So we'll cycle back to that. I'll write this value down and uh, we'll square that in a moment. But I want to point out some of the other things that are on the calculator here that you've got n, which is the number of data values. But then here, look at this. I've got minimum. Uh, I've got maximum, I've got the median, I've got the mode. So the calculator not only finds some of these complicated values, 
but it'll even sort the values for you and kind of find some of these things that uh, really weren't hard for this example, but they're a pain if I have a lot of data values. Sometimes it's tough to find the median, okay? Uh, and so here's the median, uh, here's the mode, um, maximum, minimum, which makes it easier to find the range. Uh, it also gives us the quartiles. If you remember the first and the third quartiles from doing box and whisker plots, those are available here as well. Okay. So now finding the uh, variance, just a matter of going back to, to this guy and saying, hey, let's take that standard deviation, the 29.11, uh, and I actually wrote down the rest of the decimals here, the 0, uh, 6, 2, 6, uh, 4, 3. And I'm just going to square that. So I square that thing, and it gives me uh, a, an 847.43. Okay? And so there's our, our mean, there's our variance, there's our standard deviation for this one. Okay? Uh, pulling my calculator back up here, uh, the other really nice thing about plugging these into something like a calculator is, once again, remember that idea of outliers. Remember this 189 over here we considered an outlier? Well, when we do this on something like a calculator, it's really easy to go back to that stat menu and just say, you know what? I want to get rid of that 189, so I hit delete. And now I can just recalculate this thing and go back to calculate one variable statistics. And look at this. It redoes the, the mean for me because I have a new mean now that I've gotten rid of that outlier. It redoes the, the variance and the standard deviation. So now I can see my, my new standard deviation here um, is the n minus 1 version, the 11.55, uh, uh, or sorry, 5.6 here. Um, and then uh, from there, I can, I can scroll down and see uh, all the, the things that are now different uh, now that I've eliminated that outlier, okay? Uh, and then I could, of course, go and find the variance as well by chain t taking this guy, uh, that standard deviation, and squaring it. But it's really easy to make adjustments after I've already done some calculations um, in terms of getting rid of things like outliers and not having to redo that whole formula, just having to, to kind of just recalculate it, okay?